Okay, so to start my explanation, I'm actually going to start with the end. I'm going to show you what actually uh, the proving system can, you know, allow you, allows you to prove. Um, and then you'll see that um, it's kind of weird. And so I'll explain, you know, in a later video, um, how to transform a program into something that this proving system can understand. This kind of, a, let's, think, let's think of it as a backend. Uh, and so really the, the ideas in, I think most of these uh, ZK SNARK um, constructions are, is that we're using polynomials. Polynomials, you know, as like univariate polynomials with only one unknown, like, you know, x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 or something like that. Um, and basically, we have a protocol to prove that if you know, uh, if you have a polynomial, let's say f of x, that is equal to 0 for, uh, for all x belonging to some domain h, and you can see, uh, you know, h has just a set of points, h1, h2, uh, etc. Uh, then we have a protocol to prove um, to prove that to prove exactly that. And basically, what you could do is that you could send you know the the polynomial. So let's say the f of x is something like that, but much 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 uh, bigger than that. And let's say that you, you you could send that, and the other person could verify that indeed um, you know f of h one is equal to zero, f of h2 is equal to zero, and, and so on. But instead, we have a very succinct way of, of showing that. And that's kind of one one magical part of the of the Zika snarks and, and of Planck, is this, uh, this, this trick or this technique to compress um, a proof that f of x is equal to zero, zero for all of these x's in h, um, and compress that into something much smaller. So basically, um, what uh, mm -hmm. so the trick comes from here. You have f of x, uh, and you know that it's equal to zero for all of x in this in this h. By the way, I did not precise but um, precise that, but f is actually in some uh, in some field in some field f, uh, and and we'll kind of ignore that part. But basically, coefficients and values. Uh, and everything is, is in some field f and you can think of that as uh, let's say you know uh, zp like all, all the all the numbers positive integers uh, 0 1 2 etc up to some uh, uh, to, uh, to p minus 1 where p is a prime right so just just know that we're not just in the real numbers or the complex numbers or whatever we're, we're in this in this field but that doesn't really matter um, in all the explanations that are, are going to follow. So anyway, we're in this field and basically if you know that f of x vanishes in all of these points, it means that you can actually write x as um, h1 minus x times h2 minus x, etc. and some other times some other polynomial x, uh, t of x. Uh, and we'll call this little guy um, the quotient polynomial. Uh, and you'll see why uh, we call it this. Um, but basically, I, I hope you're convinced that because h1, h2, etc. are roots of this polynomial, then we can write it like this. And this, uh, this big multiplication with all the roots, we'll call that, um, usually it's called z of h of x. And this is the vanishing polynomial uh, for the domain H. Mm -hmm. So these are just names; it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is what they are called, you know, in the in the paper and in other um, sometimes in other zk snark protocols. So I'm reusing the same names. So basically, if you have f and you're dividing it with this uh, vanishing polynomial, and you can because uh, we know that. Uh, these x's are, or or this h1, h2, h3, etc. are roots of, of f. So you can divide f by this vanishing polynomial. Then what you get is uh, the quotient polynomial t. And there is no rest, right? And so that's the first step of the trick that we're going to use. It's, it's just, just, you know, f can be written under that form. 
and then we can use the um, the Schwartz Schwartz Zippel lemma. Uh, I'm assuming Schwartz and Zippel are two different uh, people, but I don't know. Um, kind of like defilement, maybe. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, Schwartz Zippel says a bunch of stuff, but basically uh, one of the variant is that if uh, you know if a polynomial, let's call it F, is equals to is equal to a polynomial G, then they will be equal in all the points, right? Like you can take F of any point, uh, let's say X for any X in your field, and and you'll have that identity. But if F is different than G, then F of X will be different uh, from J of X. Uh, g of x, sorry, for most points. And actually, uh, it says that uh, basically the degree of uh, it's it's based on the degree of of, of f and g, and and um, if the degree of these polynomials are are quite small compared to the to the side of the field, then then we're good. There's a negligible probability that um, that f of x will be equal to g of x for some random x uh, because there's so few um, there's so few of them and basically i'm not going to give a proof but an idea of a proof but if you do f of f minus g um, you'll get the, no the number of points that are equal right is pretty much solving the equation f of x minus g of x equals zero and so that's the number of roots that you have, uh, let's call that polynomial L of x, or I don't know, um, or U of x, I don't know. And basically, that's the number of roots that you have, right? How many x's uh, solve this equation, this big equation? And the number of x's that solve this equation cannot be bigger than the degree of that polynomial, which cannot be bigger than the individual degrees of f, uh, f and g. And I'll let you think about that, but I'm not going to go more into the details. So anyway, schwartz tells us this, this thing that's uh, very believable. And what we can do with, with that uh, knowledge you know, in mind is that we can say that if you give me, for, let's say it's a protocol, you know, there's a prover and a verifier as usual. And, and I'm trying to prove to you that this polynomial is, is vanishing in these points in the domain H. Basically, what you can do as a verifier, you can send me uh, some random points. Let's call it R, you know, in the field. Uh, oop, I'll write it like that. And then you can send uh, you can send me the evaluation of f of R, um, and then the evaluation of uh, t of R. You know, uh, of course, I do not know t. Let's because I maybe I don't know f or something like that. And so then I receive f of r. I'm like, okay, cool. Is it equal to zh of r, which I can calculate myself because I know r as the verifier, times t of r, which you just gave me. And if this identity checks out, then I know that indeed f um, can be divided by, by the vanishing polynomial, which tells me that um, it, if you can divide it by this vanishing polynomial, uh, then it must be that for all these points in the domain, f of x equals zero. Uh, so that's a succinct way of proving that because you you don't have to, you know, calculate anything or, uh, you know, the domain might be pretty large, and you don't need to send the evaluations of these points or whatever. You can just send the evaluation of uh, two polynomials at a random point, and that's enough. So that's the that's really the succinctness part of zk snarks. Now, of course, you must have a lot of question. Like if I'm sending you this this polynomial, like what's the there is no zero knowledge ness. Like I'm just sending you stuff. Um, doesn't really make sense. So so this is probably very abstract. And also like the biggest one of the biggest question here is also how do you transform a program into a polynomial? Uh, and so, uh, yeah, well, I'll answer that in the next videos.